and we're going to use this class to introduce the concept of array list and we're going to talk a little bit about how they're better or similar to arrays so let's look in this class and you remember that when we created a regular array we would go like this we would go int array data equals new int and then we would say how big the array was and then we could populate the array like this and etc like that so that's basically how we work with an array now we mentioned before that the biggest objection that coders have to using arrays despite all their benefits is that they're of fixed size so this array for example i've allocated memory for six integers it's always going to be of size six the best we could do is we could create a new array like this and then we could for example go like this and we could make the old array point to the new space which is larger and we could copy all the elements into the new array this would be a pain to do though it would be a real pain so what we really want is we want to know if there's another type of data structure in java that is more flexible that will grow and shrink as we need it and that would be a really handy thing to have and that's essentially what an array list is the first thing you need to understand, though, is that an array list is not automatically imported into your code. So you're going to have to import it from the utility library. And what we're going to do now is we're going to create an array list. Now, you remember the array list, sorry, you remember when we created a dog, we would go like this. I'm going to ask for a volunteer. Mr. Sawyer, sir, look how I created the dog. Let's say I want to create an array list called A. Can you walk me through the code? Uh, we're going to call this, uh, we'll call it A equals what, sir? Okay. So you would expect it to be something like this, and it is very similar to this. There's one additional change that we have to put in. We have to tell the array list what kind of data it's going to hold. So in this case, for example, let's say I wanted to store some decimal numbers into the array list. Uh, I could try to go like this, but you'll notice that when you go to compile this, that it complains. And if you go look under here and it says, uh, I can't hold doubles, that array list cannot hold primitives. They can't hold integers, they can't hold decimal numbers, they can't hold booleans. And you might be thinking, well, those are really useful things to be able to hold, but it's not a problem because there's a version of this primitive that's a little bit more sophisticated that has a box around it that basically does the same thing. And I taught it to you earlier in the year. See if you can discuss with your partner, if it can't hold a double primitive like this, what can we put in here that's extremely similar that will work? So we can use the capital double, and that's what we're going to do. And if you look in the dark into your graphic organizers, you'll see that's somewhere on there. Let me see. That's going to be line uh, three. It tells you that while well, an array can hold objects or primitives, the array list can only hold objects. So that's why you see I have to use an object version of the decimal numbers here instead of the primitive version. That's just one of the rules. And now what we have here is on this array, you can see I've set it to be size six. Who can tell me how big is my array list right now? No, sir, it definitely has a size. It's zero. See, the reason why it's size zero is because you haven't put anything in it. Now, who remembers, how do I ask an array, how long are you? Like if I go over here and I want to print out the length of this array, what do I do? Uh, Miss Ariam, how do I ask an array, how long are you? dot length like this and who remembers if I have a string and I want to print out how long the string is how do I do that one it's a little bit different uh, Mr. Baker what do I do sir length with the parentheses and one of the things that people don't like about Java is that do these two things are not the same even though they should be Unfortunately, it turns out with the array list, you have to learn a third thing now to ask it for its length. So if I want to know the length of this array list, for example, I would go like this, like that. 
And the reason why it's not the same is a little bit complicated. Array list belongs to a group of classes called a collection. And for collection, this is the standard way you ask a collection, how many items do you have? So I forget who was it that just told me the right answer, but this is going to print a zero. This is going to print a six. And this is also going to print a six. Let me just add a character here so this will print a seven. OK, so we should get a six, a seven, and a zero. And you can see there's the six for the array, a seven for the string, and a zero for the array list. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about something that's not really on the AP test, but you might stumble across this if you were to look at old problems from old Barron's books, or perhaps you go on the internet and look up some old problems from previous AP exams. You'll see that sometimes the array list is written like this. And this is the way that the array list used to be written in versions of Java before version 7. We, by the way, are right now up to, I think, about Java version 17 or so. Maybe there's even an 18 out. I'm not sure. But in the olden days, we're talking like, I don't know, 10 years ago or so, they used to write array lists like this. You can still write them like this, by the way, but you shouldn't because you're going to miss many of the benefits that you get from the compiler telling you you're making mistakes. But I have a question for you. When they used to write it like this, what type of object did the array list used to hold? I'll give you a hint. It was a very generic class. It could hold anything. It hold objects. It would hold objects. But then when Java version 7 came out, they said, you know, this is not a good thing to do because you can accidentally put the right type of the wrong type of stuff into the array list. So they introduced this bracket notation where you have to specify what type of thing that the array list holds. In our example, we're going to put some decimal numbers in here. And you should basically specify it on both sides. And I will tell you also that if you specify it on the left and don't specify it on the right, the compiler will assume that this is also a double. It can't assume that all the time, by the way, because there are instances we'll talk about later where this might be a double and this might be something else. But in this class, these two will always be the same. And so you have a choice. You can either specify it in both places, or you only really have to specify it on the left. Just to be clean and tidy, I'm going to continue to specify it in both places. The size is still zero here. And what we want to do is we want to add some stuff to the array list. So right now, the array list, it looks like this. It's empty. And by the way, one of the big differences between the array list and the array is that if you need to print the array, you've got to write a whole method to print it. But the array list, because it belongs to this collections interface, knows how to print itself. So let's put a couple of numbers into the array list and print it. To put up number into the array list, you can just use the add feature. So I can go a.add, and I'm going to put in here one of my favorite numbers. And you can see that that's going to go into the array list. What will be the index? where this goes in. This will be at position 0. If I add another number, that will go in at index 1. Let's print the array list now. Look, I just throw the entire array list into the print statement, and it knows how to print itself. And you can see here that the array list printed itself. It has this nice format where it gives these sharp brackets, puts a comma and a space between the elements, prints it nice. Now, I'm going to show you some tricks you can do with the array list. The first thing that you can do is you can insert anywhere. You see here I inserted at the end, but I can insert at the beginning, in the middle, whatever I like. Let's say I wanted to insert a number in between these two numbers. When I add it like this now, it puts it in position one. What happens to the old number that was in position one? It, everything shifts to the right for you. Isn't that nice? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another number to the very beginning of the list and move everything to the right. I would like to enter 5.6 to the very beginning of the list. I want it to look like that. So how am I going to enter the 5.6 all the way to the left here? So now it enters it at the zero position, zero index, and it shifts everything over to the right. So now let's print this one again. And you can see here are the two. 
Notice that the 5.6 that Mr. RS5 inserted was all the way at the beginning and everything shifted over. So now I want to insert something at the end. I can do that one of two ways. I can go like this. Is it a three or a four? What do I put in here to add this 5.9 to the end of the array list? If you're not sure, ask yourself, what index do I want that 5.9 to occupy? Let's see here. Uh, Miss Ariam, what should I put here? Four. So let's do that. You can see that 5.9 got added. What would have happened if I had put a three here? Discuss with your partner. And what would happen to the 1.414, sir? You can see that's not what we wanted, right? But it came in near the end. Now I'll show you something also very handy with the array list. We can each we remove numbers also. So let's say right now the array list looks like this. I want to remove this 3.14. See if you can look on your graphic organizer and figure out what to do here to remove the 3.14. I'll give you a hint. There are two ways to do it. A dot remove, sir. And now the question is, what should I put in here? Okay, so let's do that. Oh. And you can see here that the pi got removed. There's another way to remove the pi. See if you can discuss with your partner. Mr. Jeremy, sir, any idea how else I might remove the pi without knowing? Like, let's say I don't know where it is. I want to remove it the first instance. What, what would I do, sir? I just need to tell it what I want removed. And you can see this also removes the 3.14. Mr. Mason, uh, what does this um, array list hold? So when I give it a double, it, it knows it's a thing I'm looking for. When I give it an integer, what does it assume it is? It assumes it's an index. You see the difference, right? Now, there were two questions asked. I want to get to both of them. Let's say that the array list had a bunch of 3.14s in it. And you can see that there are a bunch of 3.14s in here. When I tell it to remove the 3.14, it's only going to remove one of them. It'll remove the first one. That's right. So let's run it. And it's a little hard to tell, but you'll have to trust me that this one got removed and not this one. So that's how you remove it. Now, getting back to Mr. Mason's question, uh, how do you know that it's going to be an index or a uh, item that's being removed? You can tell here there's no ambiguity because if I put in a decimal number, it knows it's an item. And if I put in a integer, it knows that it's an index. Where is the one case? where it will become ambiguous. Discuss with your partner. There's one ambiguous case. Sir, can you think of a case where I give it a number and it doesn't know if it's an index or an object? If it's an array list of integers. Let's look at that case for a second. Now I'm going to put some numbers into the array list. It might just be a delay. OK, so you can see I have my array list here. I'm going to ask it to remove item. Now you agree this is ambiguous, right? Do I mean the item two or do I mean the index two, which by the way would be the seven? So I'm just going to show you what happens here. What does it assume if you don't tell it otherwise? It assumed that the number was an index. Now, I need to tell it that it's not an index, but it's a integer object. I need to put something in front of here to tell it that it's an integer object and not an index. I want to take that two. And I want to make sure that the compiler understands that it's not a little integer two, but a capital integer two. I need to transform the two. I need to cast it. Now I'm telling it I want to remove the object two. So let's run this again. And you can see this time it understood that it was the object two that I want removed. All right. Uh, I'm going to show you one more trick here, and then I'm going to ask you to work on some exercises with your partner. I mentioned to you in the graphic analyzer on the uh, next to last line, you see it says initialization, and it says there's no quick way to initialize an array list. That's actually not really true. I'm going to show you a shortcut. This shortcut is not tested on the AP exam. It's only provided to you so that you can save some typing. So what I'm going to do is instead of going like all this, 5274, I can put them all in the same line like this. And so that will basically take the numbers, create a list out of it, and feed it to the array list as a starting point. And that will create the same. No, it won't. I have to import it. Uh, here, you can see I've cheated and put this all together as a single list. 
uh, just to save some typing. You can use this on the AP exam, but I would be careful. It's not part of the curriculum. Let me just run this for you to show you it does the same thing. You can see it still does the same thing. I, I need you to work on some exercises for me. And, and in fact, I'm going to uh, I'm going to make this list a little bit longer. And uh, what I want you to do is I want you to write a for loop to print all the elements in the array list one at a time. I know it's got a built-in printer, but I want you to use a for loop to print it. You may need to use your graphic organizer to find out how to access each of the elements. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to continue, and I'm going to ask for help for a for loop here. And you can see all the numbers are being printed here. I'm going to make this just slightly fancier. I'm going to print I plus space plus the number. And I'm going to make it so that you can see the, the indexes and the items right next to each other. Okay, now what I want you to do is right underneath this, write a for each loop to print each of the items. Remember that whole for each loop thing? Like that. And this will work equally well. And you can see here is the for loop. And here is the for each loop. The restrictions that I mentioned before for a for each loop still apply. What are the restrictions on a for each loop? Can't change the array list, can't move stuff around, can't delete, can't add, can't change any of the elements. Okay, it's, it's you can only examine, you can't change. All right, now what I'd like you to do is try to use your graphic organizer to change the first two elements here to be zero. I want, no, I want to change the five to a zero and the two to a zero, keep the other ones as they are. Okay, so I want to change the first two items, so that's how you do that. And then after we're all done, we'll, I'll just print the array list for you. And you can see the first two elements have been changed to a zero. I want to drop the last item. I want to remove it, but I don't know how big the array list is. See if you can write a little code to remove this one and without knowing how many elements there are. So a dot size doesn't exist because the size is going to be one more length than the last valid index. The same rules were for the array. And now if I print it again, you'll see that the one is gone. So I'm using it as an index here, so I don't have to cast it. If it was an item, then I would have to cast it. So I have given you in about 40 minutes a rundown of pretty much everything you need to know about ArrayList. Do you think you could take the test tomorrow? No. What's missing? I'll tell you what's missing. There are some traps with ArrayList. They don't work as easily and as fluidly as I showed today. There's some things that are really tricky about them. It's going to take us a couple of weeks to get through that. The other thing is we use array lists as part of larger algorithms. That means FRQs. 